Hi, give me 10 minutes and you will know a lot about modules, how to create your own module, why modules are so important in Python, and how to create documentation for your module. So modules are just files with definitions or, or functions in them. Sometimes these modules are built in Python. For example, the random module. You can use these modules by using the import keyword and the name of that module, in this case, random. You don't need to install it, it exists in Python. So you have used this, I guess, in the past for generating random numbers. That's what we are gonna do now as well. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's have like a variable called uh, rn for random number. And I'm gonna use this random module that I've imported with a dot notation, meaning go inside this random file and grab this method. And what is this method? Let's use randint. And this one takes a couple of um, arguments. For instance, give me a random number between three and seven. I mean, including three and including seven. Now, if I print this rn, control enter, you will see that I have, for example, three. And I might get a different number, which is four now. But how do you know what methods are available, or what functions are available in a module. So, to, in order to do that, we can print the directory dir of that module, which in our case is random. Now, it's gonna give us a list of all the things that are available through random module. You can see randint is here, should be somewhere here. Yeah, well, trust me, it's somewhere here. Now, oh yeah, here, randint or choices or rand range. Now you know these exist or shuffle, but how do I know what, what do they do? So what does a rand range do that randin doesn't? Let's find out. So I can use the help function now to go inside the random module and get to the rand range method. That's it, no parentheses. Now look at this documentation here. Help on method rand range in module random. This is it. There's a start, an argument, stop, and a step. Choose a random item from a range. This fixes the problem with rand end, which includes the endpoint. That is, if it's from three to 10, it also includes three and 10. But with rand range, you only got to go up to nine. So this is how you can get to documentation to see what each method or function inside that module does. Perfect. So now we have used someone else's module. What about creating our own? Well, why do we even need to do that? Let's say we do certain th stuff, uh, I don't know, on a daily basis. For example, let's have this uh, module called text, this file called text.py. And let's say we analyze text as our job. So we need certain functions and we need to do them to, to use these functions over and over again. I'm not going to define the function and create it every day in a single file. I'm just going to create certain functions that I know I will use over and over and save it as a module. And then I will draw on that module, just like we did on random. You don't create all those functions from scratch. Now let's have this text file. I'm gonna define a function, very simple, just some, just for the sake of example. Let's define a function called lower underscore case. And that one takes a text argument. And what it returns is that text dot lower method. So it just lower cases the text, that's it. Nothing fancy. Let's define another one called, this time, uppercase. Let's just say upper, upper case. And this also takes a text argument. And what it returns is that text dot upper. That's it. Now, first of all, I want to create something like this kind of doc, doc string or documentation, let's say, some explanation of our code that what it does so that if later I come back, I know why I created this, what arguments uh, it takes and what it returns. So what I do right inside the function, I create three 
columns here, quotes. Inside that, I say something like these. I would say, um, let's say returns, or I don't know, function, function, function to convert uh, text to lowercase. I explain it first, and then I say, okay, arguments. What arguments does it take? It takes argument text, which is a string, str, um, and I explain what it is, what does it do to this argument text to be lowercase. Now that's it. And then what it returns, I can also specify here, returns lowercase text. Okay, that. Now I'm going to uh, copy this and paste it down here in this uppercase function, only that instead of lowercase, I'm going to use uppercase and uh, let's say uppercase here and also uppercase here. And that's it. Now let's go back to our main and let's use this text. So let's say I have a text. Let's call it T for now. And that text is going to be a combination of um, uppercase and lowercase. So this is a text like that. Now at the top, first we need to remember import our um, our module, so import text. You don't need to include that pie. So import text, it's in the same directory, so it's fine. So import text, now we've imported that. How can I use the function inside this on this text? Just like random, remember. Let's say we have a variable called, um, I don't know, uh, ut for upper text, uppercase text. And that is going to I get from the text module dot, just like random dot randint. What is the name of function that does that? It's what's called uppercase, right? This is what we defined here, uppercase. It grabs, it takes an argument text, which is T in this case. Now let's have another one, and this time for lowercase. Let's say lower, no, lowercase. What is wrong with me? And here, let's say LT. Now that we've done that, let's just print them out. So now let's print um, lower text and upper text. Okay, control enter, and let's see what happens. Look, we have lowercase, uppercase, perfect. So someone who comes to this module doesn't know what it has. So they would go with something like print dir and text, something that we did with random. And then it gets this list of built-in uh, functions and definitions uh, that Python has available to it and cache, documentation and all that up to lowercase and uppercase. He says, okay, so what does this lowercase do? Well, in our case, it's just uh, obvious, but let's say it was not. So lowercase, what does it do? So they go with help inside text, remember, dot, lower underscore case and let's see what it does magic help on function lowercase function to convert text to lowercase arguments text returns lowercase text isn't it amazing that's awesome okay now let's do another thing so let's say that we have this um, module but if it had a longer name, for example, text, I don't know, analysis underscore module, let's say it has some kind of a long name like that. And whenever we wanted to use it, we had to say something like, I don't know, text underscore analysis underscore module, then dot, and then lower underscore case, something like that text is too long. So we can give it an alias or a nickname so that we use that one, which is shorter. So we use an as keyword, import this as T for text, A for analysis, M for module, T-A-M. So from now on, I use T-A-M instead of all this long word. This is called an alias. And I'm sure you've used it in, in pandas, for example, import pandas as PD. Sometimes there are conventions to um, to use for those names. So this is one way of doing it. Now, another thing, 
let's say I had, I don't know, a hundred functions here and I just needed maybe one of them. I'm not going to import all this file so that I use only one function. So what I can do, I can specify, I would say import lower underscore case, but from where? From text. So I say from text module import lowercase function, this one. So now I have first hand access to this. So what I can do, let's say T is a, um, this is whatever, this is something. And now I want to turn this into lowercase. So I would say lowercase text is equal to lowercase. I don't need to use text anymore with the dot notation because I have imported this directly from text. So I have first-hand access to lowercase now. I've imported only this one. If you want to make it shorter, you can also give it an alias text or import lowercase as, for example, ls or lc, I don't know, whatever. And now lc refers to lowercase. So I can see, I say here like lc, and let's just print it actually. Uh, right here, print it here, and let's see what it does. You see, lowercase. Great. Now, another thing is to import everything from text. So let's say I wanted to do the same thing with lower, not just with lowercase, but also with uppercase to have immediate uh, direct access to all these. So I can simply add a star means from the text module import everything. So now what I have access to is, let's say LT for lowercase is equal to lower case and T here. And I can do the same thing with uppercase and put it somewhere else. So you don't need text anymore because you're importing everything. So you have first hand access to everything here. So now you don't need that anymore. And this should work if I print, for example, I don't know, UT, for example, it should also work and you see it works. So modules are very powerful in Python and you can use them to organize your code. And you have seen here in this short tutorial how to do that. That's, I guess, it. For this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like or just a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and listening.